If you're wondering, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be a book tag video. Uh, I am still using natural lighting because of my ring light. It's supposed to arrive any day now, so this should be one of the last videos that I'm filming this way, but I can resist. I look cute today, and that I just couldn't let that go to waste. <laughs> but seriously, uh, I thought, you know, we're just gonna go back, old school, no studio lights, just chilling on the floor with messy bookshelves because that's what matters, books. So I am doing the reader problems tag. I will be answering a bunch of questions about problems that we readers can relate to. So let's get into it. By the way, I am planning on reorganizing my bookshelves properly, like literally probably after this video, I'm gonna film that because it needs to happen. But I've been surprisingly kind of enjoying it. Let me just, like, I don't know, I kind of like it. I know. Most people probably don't, but it doesn't matter. I love it and it's more work. So I need to do it eventually. <laughs> Question number one, you have 20,000 books on your TBR. Relatable. How in the world do you decide what to read next? I am a big mood reader, even though I do TBRs most months and usually I stick mostly to them. I kind of, I think with YouTube, I've been able to realize that I've been becoming more and more of a seasonal reader. You might have noticed too if you've been following me for a while, but for example, during the summer, I will read more contemporary classics, historical fiction than throughout the rest of the year. And then I will read most of my mystery thriller horror, uh, probably end of summer. And then during the fall, uh, I go through like a binge pretty much every year during that time of the year. Not that I read none during the rest, but most of them end up being during that time. And then with sci-fi and fantasy, it's most of the year. <laughs> Although I do have phases, generally speaking too, because I feel like a year or two ago, I kept reading a bunch of post-apocalyptic books, especially during January and like the end of the winter, because I kept saying that, I mean, I'm already depressed. <laughs> uh, but I feel like this year I've been mostly on a uh, witches and uh, first contact with alien type of mood which I need to read more of. I feel like I took a little break because I was doing, you know, the mystery thriller horror for the fall. But yeah, uh, I'm definitely a mood reader, so I would probably just look at my stuff, make a pile, and then go through those and then make a different pile and everything. I feel like it just helps me manage the humongous Mount TBR, you know what I mean? Which is why I usually make a shelf or something, a pile somewhere of the ones I'm hoping to read that month. So yeah, that's how I deal with it. Like even with yearly challenges, I still tend to not do it all in one month, right? I'll just pick up whatever during that month I am in the mood to read. So yes, question number two. You're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? It really depends. I feel like I've done both. I've become much better at putting down a book when I'm not enjoying it. I'm still pretty stubborn and usually I will read at least 50%. That's usually where I decide if I'm continuing or not. Uh, it's gonna really depend if it's a book that a lot of people say that the ending is amazing or if it's like a classic, like everyone seems to usually enjoy it. I will push through and to be honest, very often it's not necessarily worth it. It just really depends really, but oops, my phone. Um, but I would say that uh, lately I have been doing it more than usual and I'm okay with it. I've been really learning to just move on and like just because everyone else is loving it, it's fine if you don't. Like it's not that it makes me special. There's always commenters that say that stuff. It's like it has nothing to do with it. It's just like it's okay to admit it because I feel like sometimes on booktube you're just not allowed to not like a book that everyone else does and if, if you don't you're doing it to be cool and it's like no it's fine you're allowed to put down a book if you're not enjoying it so i've been pretty good at that so question number three the end of the year is coming and you're so close but so far away on your goodreads reading challenge i'm feeling personally attacked right here do you try to catch up and how okay you know what let's talk about my reading challenge i am admitting right now i'm going to fail at it Okay, let's put this on a thumbnail and everything. Make it very clickbaity, even though it's not clickbait, if it's true. I am probably going to lower my goal to 95 instead of 100, just because, not that I need to hit it, it's just that I hate how they remove it if you don't hit it. And I feel like it's very easy to just get to see all of the books. So I think I'm gonna do that just for everyone else, but also myself. But also, um, 
I, my goal is not to stress myself or anything and I'm not going to binge read a bunch of tiny books just to hit it. Everyone else is allowed to do whatever they want, but I don't think I will do that just because that's not what I'm feeling in the mood for. I'm going to continue reading the books that basically I'm going to finish a bunch of the books that I'm, I'm in the middle of that kept being resent to the library because since my surgery and then the move, I haven't been able to keep up with my natural pace which is fine, you know, life happens. Uh, I think if I hit 95 books in a year, still gonna be great. Uh, but yeah, I might not hit my 100 and it's fine. So no, I will not try to catch up to it. Yeah, so I don't think I will, but if you do want to catch up to uh, your goal, for example, either reading books that are very engaging, sometimes things that you want to binge read, like series, why ones are definitely good for that, or sometimes just grabbing shorter books well, actually, Mystery Trailers too can be, you know, fast-paced. But um, I feel like sometimes reading shorter books, if you want to, I should do a video about shorter books. But um, it doesn't mean that you're going to read bad books or anything. Plenty of really great ones. There's plenty of classics, actually, that are quite short. So, yeah, actually, I do have one right here. Aha. So, uh, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. That's a very short book. There's only like 50 pages, but it's very interesting and very different from the movie. So if you want to read something short that is great, that is a recommendation right there. Is it better or worse? I don't know. We're gonna suck it up. It's one more day. <laughs> uh, question number four. The covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? Oh, badly. I don't sleep at night. I search constantly on the internet for something that will match. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. I have plenty of those on my shelves which I don't know where they are, but I have the Winner's Curse series where uh, out of three books, there are two that matches, one that doesn't because one is the UK and the other ones are US or something. And whatever, uh, to be honest, I tend to buy most of my books used. So that kind of comes with the territory and I'm okay with it. I don't really mind. Obviously, does it look prettier? Of course, but I will not spend the money to buy only hardcover pretty edition. like. If they're sent to you, then yeah, sure, you can have those gorgeous shelves, but I'm poor. I buy my <laughs> most of my books at the library sale, and I'm okay with it. So yeah, I, I don't care. I do not lose sleep over this, for sure. Everyone and their mother loves a book you don't like. Who do you bond with over shared feelings? All of you guys. Oh my gosh. Because every time I pick a book and everyone loves it, before I even read it, there's always someone that will tell me that they hate it so much. I'm like... At least I know I will not be alone and I like to include those when I really hate them I love doing those renty videos and I know you guys enjoy them too because even if you enjoy the book seeing someone funnily critique it is fine it's funny and I do the same on Goodreads and usually people are okay with it and you find the people that feel the same and then sometimes you get really weird comments which are really funny so yeah the internet that's who I talk to about it because my friends don't really read or they don't read what I read, so. Question number six, you're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public. How do you deal? I stop reading. <laughs> I don't cry easily. Um, more watching movies or if one of my friends is crying, I will cry. Um, but reading a book, I don't cry easily. Uh, usually what happens more to me is when I'm reading, listening to an audio book that is funny, I'm trying to not giggle. That is the hardest part for me. But crying, I don't think it really has happened that I was struggling, but I would probably just stop and change book because I don't want to cry in public because oh my, would it look very tragic, you know, in the bus with <laughs> listening to a book cry. <laughs> yeah, people would think I'm like, yeah, going through struggle. No. Uh, I wouldn't do that. My bangs are doing better today. Don't you agree? I feel like I'm finally kind of getting the hang of it. Kind of. Kind of. Question number seven. A sequel of a book you loved just came out, but you've forgotten a lot from the prior novel. Will you read the book, skip the sequel, try to find a synopsis on Goodreads, cry in frustration? Um, that is probably why I tend to binge read series ish or like not start them until most of the books are out because I don't like waiting. Um, generally speaking, I do have a pretty good memory. Obviously I might feel that way and then I read the book and I realize maybe I didn't remember as much as I thought, but generally I do have a pretty good memory. Uh, I rarely will reread the book before. 
sometimes I might look for a syni synopsis or some type of like summary, but usually I'm pretty okay with it. I do like when books include some like recap in the first like chapter, but yeah, I probably should do it more often, but I feel like there are so many books I want to read that I can't really justify rereading some too often. But maybe one day I will do a challenge of rereading books that I really enjoy just to see if I still do slash re-enjoying them, I guess, because that would be nice. But yeah, I don't reread often, except Harry Potter. <laughs> Question number eight. You do not want anyone, anyone boring you books. How do you politely tell people nope when they ask? Oh, um, I don't get asked that often, to be honest. I do tend to lend my books and regret it because I never see them again or they don't come in the same state as before. I know some people get very intense and they will like take a picture with the person with the book, holding the book and like you can see in what condition and everything. So like if it comes back not perfect, you know, they have to repurchase another one. Uh, but because again, most of my books are used, I kind of get over it. Um, I don't know, how would I say, I guess I would just say no. <laughs> really like there's a library so yeah I guess I would just say no politely I think people around me are respectful enough someone would have to come to my place look at my bookshelves and ask for it so like most people that would come here would be polite to begin with so I don't think it would be a problem question number nine reading ADD you've picked up and put down five books in the last month how do you get over your reading slump I do need to do a video about that, but um, it could be doing something else. It could be uh, reading some books that I've enjoyed in the past. It could be picking up something fast-paced or short just to, you know, get started. Or maybe all these books kind of suck. Or, you know, maybe just putting them down, and, like moving on completely and coming back to them when you're more in the mood. Those would probably be my little tips for that. Question number 10. There are so many new books coming out that you're dying to read. How many do you actually buy? I, you've seen me. I don't think I've been buying that many new books because again, I had surgery and then I had to pay for my braces, which I am paying them for the next two years. So I am poor and I just moved. So like, <laughs> I will not be buying a bunch of new books for sure. Like I said, I do tend to go to my library sales and I'll pick up, you know, a few books each month, but like, that's what, like $20 a month. So it's not, that would be like one brand new book. <laughs> so those are definitely the exception. I would use my library because I pay, well, I have two library cards. I definitely recommend you do that. If you can go to a, you know, neighboring city uh, in exchange for a fee, you can get a library card and use it for, you know, a year. May cost me $80, which is a lot of money, but, I use my library so much that it's totally worth it. Like it ends up being like $2 per book or something that I use there. So like, and a bunch of them are audiobooks, which are usually more expensive. So I definitely get my money's worth. Question 11, after you've bought the new books, you can't wait to get to, how long do they sit on your shelf before you get to them? I am feeling so freaking attacked right now because Children of Ruin has been on my shelf since May and I have yet to pick it up. Usually, I picked them up very quick, but for some reason, we'll blame it on the surgery because I got my surgery mid-May actually, 22nd of May. So I had to like go to Korea a week before and I had to pre-film before. So this is my excuse. It just got delayed and delayed and delayed. And now I'm just feeling so shameful that I will not pick it up clearly. I will put that as a goal next year, I think, just so I can like laugh at myself. But yeah, um, usually <sighs> not long because for example, um, Holy Sister, the last book in the Ancestor trilogy by Mark Lawrence, Mark Lawrence, I read it like the day pretty much I had it. And usually I tend to do that. But yeah, that one slipped into the crack. <laughs> so those are my answers to the reader's problem tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me in the comment section your answers if you also will not be hitting your Goodreads challenge because it's gonna be my first year not hitting it. I don't think it really counts as cheating because usually I put it at 50 and then increase it to 100. So I will have hit my 50. And actually, you know what? Um, more excuses. Um, I would hit that goal 
if it weren't for my ridiculous uploading schedule for December, because I will be posting every two days. So if I weren't doing that, I think I would be able to hit the 100 pretty easily. So whatever. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe. More videos on the screen that I recommend you can check out. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.